Okay, so today I'm going to be core booting my ThinkPad X220. And I've had this ThinkPad for a little while. And I want to run a 100% free Linux distribution on it. But the problem with that is that I need to change out the Wi-Fi card for one that supports a free Linux distribution. One like this. The only problem is the stock BIOS on this thing doesn't support this Wi-Fi card. And core booting it should make it possible for me to use this Wi-Fi card. And that's, that's one of the reasons I want to core boot this. But there's also, you know, more reasons too. You get faster boot speeds most of the time, uh, better security, and just uh, being safe knowing that the FBI probably, probably isn't going to be spying on you. So yeah, there's lots of reasons to actually use core boot. But you actually need a couple things before you do it first, or before I do it. But of course you need the laptop. But uh, of course you're gonna need a screwdriver to open it up. A, uh, you're gonna need some female, the female jumper cables like these. Uh, doesn't really matter how long they are, as long as they can reach the, uh, as long as they're enough to go from this clip right here. This is one thing you're gonna need. It's a clip that will clip onto the BIOS chip, and we'll plug the little headers into these. And of course you also need a computer like a Raspberry Pi to hook up to it. And of course something to power the Raspberry Pi. But yeah, uh, the first thing you want to do when actually core booting this is here, uh, actually go ahead and take the battery out. So open that up, open this up, and then take the battery up like that. And oh, There we go. Okay, and then just make sure that the battery is drained from it. So we're going to open it up and just press the power button a few times. Okay, the power is probably drained from it. So next thing you're going to want to do is actually unscrew all the screws with this little symbol right here. The uh, you're going to want to unscrew all the screws with the keyboard symbol and this little symbol right here. So this screw. This screw, um, uh, these two in the front, these two, and then this one right here. And then once you do that, you can get the lid open. So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that I got the entire keyboard unscrewed, we can go ahead and open up the laptop. One second. Okay, and now in order to actually take this apart, um, you can go ahead and just uh, first time you actually open it, you might need a credit card to get underneath here. But once you open it once, you can know you just slide the keyboard forward like so. You can slide it forward and then pull it up, and then. Put the keyboard like that, and then you can go ahead and pull the palm rest up. So try not to use too much force when doing it, but there we go. Palm rest is up, and what you're gonna want to do is lift up this little piece of sort of tape. I think this is what this is tape, but pull it up, and you can see the BIOS chip is right here. And this is actually what you're going to want to attach your clip to. Oh, yeah. Find a way to pull this back. There we go. Okay. And so you're going to actually attach your clip to that. So I'm going to go ahead and get my little clip. And I'm going to go ahead and cut to me attaching this and all the wires. Uh, uh, of course I'll have a blog post that I made 
link in the description on how to do all this because you obviously want to know the pinouts for everything so you don't mess anything up. So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm on my laptop now, and so first things first, you want to do, of course, is uh, SSH into your Raspberry Pi. I already did that. And so next thing is you're going to want to install a bunch of utilities. I'll actually put these in the description because <laughs> doing it on camera takes a while, so I already did that. So next what you want to do is uh, you're going to want to clone the core boot repository, so we're going to do git clone recursive uh, recursive submodules and then we're going to put the core boot git repository on here so we view dot core boot dot org slash core boot dot git we're going to copy that, or clone it into home core boot. And, oh. Almost forgot. There we go, recursive. Okay. Right. And, of course, this is going to take a while, so you got to be patient, I guess. Okay, so uh, cloning the core boot Git repository. I'm finished with that. So next what we want to do is we're going to actually want to cd into core boot and then go to utilities and I or ifd tool. And we're going to find there is we're going to find a make file and we're going to go ahead and make uh, idf tool. And if you want to speed up the make process you can do dash j3 depending on how powerful your Raspberry Pi is. Mine has I think four cores. So I'm going to go ahead and do J3 to speed up the compilation process. And if it doesn't take a second, I'll cut back, but we will see what happens. Oh, there we go, actually. <laughs> it's, it was actually pretty quick. So now that, that compiled, we can go ahead and do sudo make install. And it's going to go ahead and install IDF, IDFD tool. And so now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go back to our home. And git clone. This is optional, of course, but you can go ahead and, and uh, use me cleaner to clean up the Intel management engine. Which, I mean, why wouldn't you want, you want to do that? But it's totally optional. But I'm going to go ahead and do it. So it's git clone https colon slash slash github dot com slash corna slash me cleaner and then we're going to copy that into me cleaner and there we go that's pretty quick so let's go ahead and go to me cleaner. actually we're going to keep that there for now uh, because we don't actually have our ROM yet so um, let's actually go ahead and do that so I'm going to go ahead and make a simple alias first in order to actually speed up this process and make it less confusing so we're going to go ahead and alias fr as sudo flash rom dash p linux spi and then device oh, device equals dev slash spi dev 0.0, 0. 
And then we're going to go ahead and set the SPI speed. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set it to 1024. And you can change this uh, SPI speed right here to be uh, faster or slower. Usually if it's slower, it's going to be more stable. And it, the connection isn't going to break out, but it's also going to take longer. I think I think 5112 actually takes around three minutes. So I'm keeping it, keeping it around 1024. So let's go ahead and alias that. So now if we type in FR, our alias, it'll actually go ahead and print out all the chips that are connected. And as you can see, it recognizes our Flash BIOS chip. In fact, there's four of them. Um, so let's go ahead and choose. I think all these are, yeah, multiple chips, that chip definition. So these are all the same chip, but with just a different name. So we can use any one of them. So I'm going to make a new directory called ROM. And let's actually go into there. And let's go ahead and, oh, let's go ahead and look for the chip name again. Let's just go ahead and use the shortest one right here. And I'm going to go ahead and set a chip variable just to speed things up. So I set chip equal to this. There we go. And so if we go ahead and echo chip, it'll, it's the variable with our chip name in it. So go ahead and do, we can go ahead and actually read the chip now, or our BIOS chip. So we can do fr dash c. And then chip, and then read, and we're gonna write that file to flash 01.bit. And once I go ahead and do this, it's gonna go ahead and read the BIOS, and hopefully it will be successful. This might this might take a minute or two, but you just have to be patient. I'll I'll go ahead and cut back when it's done reading. Okay, so the BIOS reading process is done, and I actually did it multiple times. As you can see, I got multiple different flash um, or bin files, and really all I did was just, um, you know, just read it multiple times and save each of those to a different file. And you're going to actually probably want to do this because what we're going to do next is we're going to actually run a checksum on all these files. So we're going to do md5sum. We're going to say flash 01 bin, flash 02 bin, and we're going to run a checksum on all these um, files. And what we can see is that all these files have the exact same checksum. So that's good. That means we can go ahead and continue with the process. Because if, if any of these checksums are different, that means something happened while reading the chip. And so you're going to want to redo reading the chips. Because if these checksums are not the same, do not continue with this process. You're going to want to reread these chips or reread the BIOS chip because that's not good. So as you can see, they're exactly the same. So I'm going to actually go ahead and back up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and back up flash 01.bin to another folder. So I'm going to do make directory backup. Okay. And I'm going to see you back into ROM and we're going to just copy all these files into backup. Okay, so now that all those files are backed up, what we can do next is we're going to go ahead and run ME cleaner on the flash, flash file. So let's go ahead and do ME cleaner, and then we're going to run ME cleaner.py with dash s and flash 01.bit. Let's see. Oh, almost forgot. Yeah, you're going to have to, yeah, permission denied. You're going to have to, since we read this using uh, root privileges, uh, as you can see, we have to run ME cleaner with root privileges. So let's go ahead and do that. So do sudo. There we go. And there we go. And now we just cleaned the management engine from the file. So next, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to extract uh, the different subfiles sort of from this one flash file. So with using ifd tool, let's go ahead and do that and .x for extract, and we're going to run it on the same file that we use the me cleaner on, so flash01. And now 
we're going to have different uh, subfiles. So now there's the Flash Descriptor, the BIOS, the Management Engine, and GBE. And really, all we really, really want is um, all we really need is the Descriptor, the Management Engine, and GBE, which is giga Gigabit Ethernet. We don't need BIOS at all. That's actually what we're re replacing with Core Boot right here. So we don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to rename these files. So uh, flash region zero. We're going to rename that to descriptor debin. Descriptor. So I'm going to make sure I spell this right. Uh, yeah, debin. Okay. And then we're going to copy flash region. Zero two until me up into me dot bin, and then we're going to go ahead and copy flash region three g dbe to gbe dot bin. And of course, there's reasons we're actually doing this. When we compile core boot, it'll make it easier later on. But so now that we actually just extracted all these uh, sub binaries from our main BIOS binary. What I'm actually going to go ahead and do next is you can actually compile Core Boot on your Raspberry Pi, but the problem is it's going to take forever. So I'm going to go ahead and actually transfer these three files, the GBE, ME, and uh, uh, where go? Oh, descriptor.bin. I'm going to copy it over to my laptop and compile, compile Core Boot from there because otherwise it's going to take hours to do this. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back on my laptop. Uh, Transfer all the files over. As you can see, I have descriptor.bin, gbe.bin, and me.bin, as well uh, as the core boot git repository. And also, I have all these screencasts or these uh, videos right here for what the video I'm making right now. I'll edit those eventually. But yeah, so we can go ahead. Um, another optional step is actually to uh, get the VGA BIOS for core boot. And this isn't 100% necessary. If you're running Windows, you should definitely do this. But then again, if you're doing, if you're on your computer, why are you running Windows? But yeah, if you need to run Windows or any niche operating system, a VGA BIOS isn't actually, actually required. But it's, it's nice to have, I guess. So we can go ahead and grab a pre, uh, we can go ahead and grab a pre-read VGA BIOS. Usually, the, uh, a normal VGA BIOS or a pre-read VGA BIOS uh, will work. If it doesn't, for you at least, uh, you can probably find a way to <laughs> get that working. But yeah, usually a stock VGA BIOS would work. So we're going to go ahead and grab that. So guide and slash raw slash master slash VGA dash eighty eighty six dash zero one two six dot bin. Okay. And there we go, we have our VGA BIOS. And I'm gonna go ahead and first thing you want to do is actually in the core boot directory go to third party and blobs. And make sure you make a mainboard directory with mkdrr. And then in mainboard, you're going to make a directory x220 using mkdrr as well. And we're going to go ahead and copy these binary blobs in there. So, or move them in there. So I'm going to move descriptor.bin, gbe.bin, and me.bin into core boot, third party, blobs, mainboard x220. And then let's go ahead and list the contents of there, just to make sure that they're actually there. Blobs, main board, joining, and there we go. So, now that we move those in there, uh, we, can, we just leave the VGA BIOS here, and you'll see why. But let's go ahead and go into core boot, and let's do make and config. And we're going to go ahead and configure core boot. So, let's go ahead and general setup. So, let's see. Uh, so yeah, the settings that are enabled already are totally fine. So let's go to mainboard, 
And let's go to Bender and let's choose Winovo. And then mainboard model is ThinkPad X220. And then the ROM size is correct and that's correct. So go ahead and go to chipset. And then let's see you can enable that's already enabled. Uh let's see. Everything looks good. And what we can go do, we can go ahead and add descriptor.bin. And as you can see, since we mo already moved it to a predefined directory, um, third party blobs mainboard mainboard directory descriptor.bin, we just enable this and it'll compile by itself. So we're going to add descriptor.bin, me firmware, and gigabit ethernet configuration. And that should be enough for uh, this configuration, I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, I think that's all we really need. Uh, so, uh, just double checking everything, make sure we don't mess anything up, as that would be catastrophic. But yeah, let's go ahead and go to devices. And uh, let's see, I don't think we really need to enable anything. Uh, this actually, for devices, if you're using VGA BIOS, this is totally optional, but you can go to, uh, where is it? Uh, you can go ahead and go to, there we go, oh, here we go, add VGA's, VGA BIOS image, and go ahead and add a custom path name. This is going to be home slash Bryce slash VGA dash 8086. Nope, dash zero one two six dot bin, and that's where our VGA BIOS is. So let's go ahead and add that, and I think that's all we need for. Um, I think that's all we need for the VGA BIOS. I'm pretty sure. And yeah, add VS video BIOS is enabled, and. Graphics and initialization. Uh, we can go ahead and set that to run VGA option ROMs. Okay. And now uh, that's configured. Let's go to generic drivers and we're just going to want to enable PS2 keyboard and net. And let's see, I think, I think that will, um, be it for the devices. Yeah. So security. Uh, we don't really need to enable anything or disable anything in security. So let's go ahead and go console. Uh, console doesn't need anything. System tables, nope. Payload. Ah, here we go. So for payload, we're gonna be, we're gonna do C BIOS. Uh, we could do something else, but we're just gonna stick with C BIOS. And for the current version, we're gonna choose master. And let's see. Hardware init during ROM execution, yes. And I think that's all the settings we need to enable. Uh, yep, I think that's it. So, and then debugging, you don't need to mess with that. So we can go ahead and press F6 to save. Let's save that. And let's go ahead and F9 to exit. And so now, now that we configured core boot, we can actually just go ahead and build it. So. I'll go ahead and do that and cut back when it's done building because this is gonna it's gonna take some time. So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so core boot finished compiling, and uh, I'll actually show you where um what where it compiles to. So if you go to the ls build, you'll see that core boot rom is the file that I compiled to. And I forgot to mention though, before you actually run make. You might have to actually run make cross, um, was it, yeah, it was cross gcc dash i386. You might actually have to run this first to create the cross compiler, but if you already have it on your system, then you don't need to do that. But if it doesn't compile, try running that. And of course, like I said, if you have any problems, just check the blog post or follow along with the blog post actually, because <laughs> I might have some errors in this video. So go, Go to the description and view that because that's gonna be more reliable than this video. But 
So now we actually built core boots. I'm going to actually go ahead and I'm going to actually transfer the core boot.rom file over to my Raspberry Pi, which I have over here in this other terminal. And so I'm going to actually go ahead and run that over. So go ahead and go to build. Oh, oops. And I'm going to run rsync on core boot dot rom and give it the local IP address and no, and no this is not uh, this is not a public IP address so no you can't dox me with this <laughs> so transfer that over and give it a moment oh, we can take a second there we go okay so if I go to my Raspberry Pi I'll see that coreboot.rom is there. So before we actually go ahead and flash coreboot, we're gonna actually want to read from. We're gonna actually gonna want to read again from our BIOS chip. And you may be wondering why are we doing that. We just want to make sure the connection's good before we flash, so nothing gets messed up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna do fr dash c and do chip. Oh. And I go and read, and we're just gonna do a dot bin, or yeah, let's just do a dot bin. And I'm gonna go ahead and read these and run an MD5 sum on it. And if they're good, I'll go ahead and flash it. But first, oh, I forgot I have to re alias it, or re alias fr, but yeah, I'll go ahead and cut back once this is done reading. Okay, so I went ahead and read. Uh, the BIOS file three different times, or BIOS chip three different times. Got three different files. And I ran an MD5 sum on them again. And as you can see, now they're the same. So let's actually get, go ahead and write to the BIOS chip. And <laughs> this is the point of no return. So make sure that you have your original BIOS file and all the other files backed up at least once because if you if this goes wrong and you don't have a backup, then you're then you just bricked your system. Sorry, but yeah, make sure everything is saved and backed up. So let's actually go ahead and flash it. So fc dash c and give it and give it the chip variable, and we're going to do dash w for write, and we're going to go ahead and give it. Actually, wait before I type that in. Make sure core boot. Yeah, core boot .rom. So fc dash c chip and dash w. And we're gonna give it core boot oh, core boot dot rom. And here we go. Here's the moment of truth. Oh, let's see. Invalid option. Hmm. Interesting. Uh. I could have sworn I used this earlier. Yes. Oh, sorry, not FC. FR. That's what I meant. FR. There we go. So here we go. This is the moment of truth. And this, I'll go ahead and cut uh, to when this is done flashing. Also, quick side note uh, if you're writing to the flash chip and it shows a message that says failed, do not worry. It probably didn't fail. Okay, that's just that's just what happens. So I'll go ahead and cut to when this is done writing. Okay, so I finished flashing the firmware uh, for Core Boot, and I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this. So let's go ahead and take this off, and I'm gonna go ahead and see if it actually boots up. So let's put that over there, and let's test and see if this will actually boot up. Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I need to put the battery back in here. Let's go ahead. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and slightly secure the keyboard a little bit more. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and pop everything into place. One second. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and. Pop the keyboard into place, 
And I'm not going to screw anything in, just to make sure. So I'm going to go ahead and just slot the battery in, like so. I might have to, might have to lift the lot, uh, laptop up. Here. Okay, batteries in. And now for the moment of truth. Does this actually work? Oh. Oh, okay. So far so good. C BIOS, there we go. Okay. And there we go. There's Core Boot. And so there we go. It finally works, or actually works. And I successfully core booted my ThinkPad X220. And so now uh, I'm gonna go ahead and install this Wi-Fi card after you know after I stop recording. But yeah, that's basically how you core boot a ThinkPad X220. And of course, um, core booting different computers. You know, there's different instructions for there are different ways to core boot different computers. But this is just for the ThinkPad X220. And but yeah, there's there's lots of reasons to uh, you know core boot a um, computer. Mine was just to have a 100% free distribution, but of course there's faster boot times, stuff like that, you know? It's it's a great thing to have. And so yeah, that's core booting my X220.